It's an illegal multi-million pound industry that the authorities are struggling to stop. A hundred pounds a tonne, and it's 300 tonnes, that soon adds up in terms of money for the dodgy operator. Yet while criminals line their pockets, neighbourhoods are left looking like slums. This is not how people should be living. This isn't what I expect of my community. And at the end of the chain are London's ratepayers, who foot the bill for the clean-up. We've had 10,000 fly tips over the past year that has cost this borough so far 1.2 million. And it's just like throwing money down the drain. There are several idyllic settings in Southall, but behind this quiet residential street is a dirty secret. Where I'm going to take you to now, it is actually, it's actually meant to be a public space, as <gasps> you can see. Wow. Awful. I mean, you know, there's broken windows here, old mattresses, cement mixer. Building know. equipment, a bath, I think. Yeah, bath. So, who, I mean, do you know who is doing this? We just don't know. The other day, there were some kids actually playing here and needles were discovered here. You know, it's wow. being used for all kinds of things. In a neighbourhood like this, with all these houses and families, this could be a beautiful garden. Yeah, absolutely. It could be a community garden or you could put up, a, you know, some swings here for kids. This is a shocking waste of space, and dumps like this are sprouting up everywhere. It's known as fly tipping, and last year there were around a million cases reported. And guess what? Some of the worst affected places are in London. Caught on CCTV, a man casually backs his truck up on a residential street in Wood Green before illegally dumping piles of rubbish. This is just one of 25,000 fly tip incidents in Haringey last year, making the North London borough the most dumped upon in the country. In fact, more than half of the 10 worst areas in the UK for illegally dumped rubbish are in London. In Croydon, fly tipping actually rose by a fifth over the last year to nearly 19,000 incidents. When you're in uh, boroughs that have a transient population, and by that I mean a population where you have lots of people moving into flats, lots of people leaving the borough and coming and going, um, you have a whole new task of re-educating people about uh, what you do with your recycling. Now, in a bid to stop the growing mountains of trash, Croydon Council has started to name and shame local residents who they've prosecuted for fly tipping. We've had 112 people now named and shamed on our website and those 112 people were the people that were actually prosecuted for either littering or fly tipping and the majority were fly tipping. So I think it's a clear deterrent. Since May this year, local authorities have won the right to whack fly tippers with on the spot fines of up to £400. <laughs> But back on the streets of Southall, the threat of a financial penalty is doing little to curb the problem. This is the forecourt of a closed down business, but now it could be a contender for Britain's biggest fly tip. Builders' refuse, baths and bicycles are just some of the rubbish illegally dumped here only this week. Security guards have been employed to try and stop its rapid growth, but the rubbish keeps coming, and not just here. Here on the left-hand side again, there's a car park. Uh, once again, I've, I've had the council uh, remove the stuff. Uh, there's you know, mattresses there. We wake up every day and we go out onto our streets and we're confronted with fridges and ovens and uh, cookers and mattresses and cupboards and people's furniture. I mean, this is the, the level of fly tipping that we face. <laughs> As the numbers of fly tips across the capital rise, the cost of cleaning up is leaving councils struggling to balance the books. The London Borough of Croydon, we spent around £246,000 clearing up fly tips. and That money could have been spent on schools, it could have been spent on public services that you know, would help vulnerable people. It's far more practical to use that money for decent things that make our society better. We've had 10,000 fly tips over the past year that has cost this borough so far 1.2 million. And we've got to make residents understand that the implications of what this is doing and the knock-on effect that it has onto other council budgets, because the council does not have the money to continue doing this, we don't. Yes, Ben, community environment. To try and curb the problem, Hounslow Council has been beefing up its anti-fly tipping squads. Today we're doing a joint action day uh, with two of our colleagues from Hounslow Highways. We're basically um, proactively 
walking along the main thoroughfares in Chiswick and we're identifying fly tips and we'll be going through bags uh, looking for evidence of who's placed it there. Within minutes, the team come across some recently dumped rubbish. Here we have some cardboard packaging with an address on. Uh, this, this person would be issued a fixed penalty notice. This type of detective work has enabled Hounslow Council to successfully issue dozens of fines in the last year. But with constantly changing bin collection days and recycling rules, many believe that local councils are actually to blame for the huge surge in domestic fly tipping. All the boroughs across the, uh, London and throughout the country have a set day for refuse collections. The, ref the residents are notified about that because we do publications. So there's no real, no real excuse to say we didn't know. With councils getting tough with fly tippers who foul public land, illegal dumpers are increasingly offloading their waste onto private property where there's little chance of getting caught. All the scrap you see here, 300 tonnes of it, was dumped on a site in Romford over one weekend. James's professional waste disposal company was asked to clean it up. The size of the job was just huge. And you think, well, how can this get to this point? We find that it's happening way too much. James believes the culprits of this crime were unregulated removal men, making easy money. The government um, put in a legislation which put landfill tax up to about eight pounds a tonne. The cost to actually dispose of waste and actually uh, transfer the stuff over to these guys is increasing. So you find the smaller company or a man in his van, their margins are being squeezed. In Southall, Vivek has spent the last few weeks spearheading a campaign to clean up his neighbourhood. Basically, I started um, by uh, tweeting uh, the council leader and just raising the issue with him and sending him photographs of, of some of the fly tipping. And then from there, I was, uh, my local councillor got involved and uh, I then spoke to some residents and I spoke to some local businesses, etc. Vivek's networking has paid off. Ealing Council are actually clearing more fly tips and faster. Yet, despite this, the problem now seems worse than ever. We have a situation where the council keep removing it and people keep putting new fly tipping piles there, then it's just a never-ending cycle. And right on cue, Vivek, here is some junk. Yeah, I mean, and this is a classic example. A few weeks ago, um, uh, I contacted the council and they removed another pile of um, junk, basically. We report it, the council come and take it away, and a few weeks later, a new pile of junk appears. From the massive fly tip hidden behind a quiet residential street to the private property turned into a mass wasteland, London is being buried under its own rubbish. And unless we can all change our attitude to waste disposal, things are only going to get worse.